Hello everyone, and welcome back to the next episode of Star Trek Adventures The Expanse. Uh, so I have one announcement today, uh, due to GM uh, bullshittery that will probably happen. I am starting with no threat. So have fun with that. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, I believe that the captain has the log for the episode. He does. Stardate 84703.5 Having completing the long and tedious diplomatic ceremonies with the Okane Surala royalty, food and drink were palatable, but the speeches and ceremony were dry and repetitive. Diplomacy is not my strong suit. There was an interesting science uh, exposium, though, that I did enjoy thoroughly. Doctor, I'm sorry, Commander H. Hadricks. On the other hand, had a very interesting time, it appears. A small group of the delegation were performing Talaxi Alazane Salasi, a nude form of martial arts, some similar to what pinkskins call Tai Chi. Somehow it ended in two sprained ligaments and a broken nose during the event. During this time, though, the Concordia has completely mapped out the whole Ukraine-owned space. Dr. DeWitt has offered us a tour of the Great Library, so we are currently making our way across the gulf of empty space toward the Lashan-claimed Lish space. End log. Okay. So, does anybody have any scenes they wish to have before I throw you guys completely into the jaws of plot? Mm hmm I don't have any. Going once. Nope. Going twice. Fair nope. enough. So we are going to cut to the bridge. Everyone is having a fantastic day. Uh, you have been at warp for a prox. You've been at nice cruising speed, warp 7, for about 8 hours. And are just putting the last of the Ulke Emirates out of your long range sensors. It isn't long. Until you receive a call from, or, uh, 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 sorry, just switching into GM mode. I forgot to turn that on. <clears throat> Reboot GM. Uh, I'm a horrible. Okay. Just turn it off and turn it on again. Yeah, I'm sure that will fix all our problems. No <laughs> problem whatsoever. Anyways, so, uh, Lieutenant Nix uh, pipes up from her consoles. Uh, Captain. We are receiving a long-range hail from uh, Starbase Deep Space 15, marked high priority. Uh, coded? Uncoded, sir. Okay, on screen. And there we have Captain Crawford appears in a, in his uh, best suit and t best uh, uniform, Looking a bit ragged. Uh, doesn't look like he's had much sleep. Or possibly it's about midnight on the space station. So, you know, take that as you will. Captain, know. how are you? Uh, about as good as I can be. How's the crew of the Concordia, Captain? Good. You look ruffled. Um, is everything all right? I think ruffled is putting it a bit lightly. Um, we've run into a bit of trouble. Um, a while ago, uh, I guess we call it, this wasn't in the log and I should have asked, uh, about how long ago did Mud leave? Uh, about two days ago. Okay. Probably less, but yes. Okay. About two days ago, I sent out Lieutenant Mud with a slip near class ship in order to pick up ambassadors from the Medell and Yalexi species to try and ease some diplomatic tensions between the two. Um, he picked up the Medell ambassador yesterday, uh, but didn't reach the Yalexi representative. We have reason to believe that something may have gone wrong with the ship's quantum slipstream drive, and we hope that 
nothing has gone wrong, but we did pick up a brief distress call about two hours ago that is from the Data 3 sector. Um, it contains uh, a voice message from Lieutenant Mud, which I will be forwarding over to you. And I'm hoping that you and the crew of the Concordia can go find them. Absolutely. Do you have uh, rough coordinates or where the signal came from? We do. I can send the send best... them to Helm. Yeah. Send what you can to Helm and we'll go investigate for you. Will do. Godspeed, you. Godspeed Concordia. Thank you, Captain. We'll keep you informed. Thank Bashir you. Bashir out. And okay, first thing I like to do is play the um, message. Sure. The message is obvious, or is voice coded from Ensign David Mudd, Ju Lieutenant Junior Grade. This is Ensign Mud on board the Slipnir class Orthos. Suffered a QSD failure heading to this heading to sit uncharted system at high speed attempting to crash landing sending coordinates. <coughs> Medel Medel ambassador currently safe. System is Ah. <clears throat> and there's a big burst of static as there appears to be a compression error heading to moon this is going to hurt hang on ambassador and then you lose signal okay Pimrose, did you get the coordinates this garden has received coordinates maximum warp to those coordinates Understood. And even at max warp, that's going to take about five hours to get there. So, oh, okay. prep time. Who wants to do prep work for this? Uh, I will. All right. Um, Good, because I was going to tell you to. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely do it. Um, based off the coordinates, where uh, where are we going in the Theta Three system or Theta Three sector? Uh, Theta Three sector. There's only a. Uh, the Theta 3 sector is a just barely on the edge of um, habitable or a lot of uh, star systems before it enters a before it enters the gulf between the Ulke Emirates and the uh, you know you keep going for a long while and then you'll eventually hit the Lashunt and the um, Nalu. Uh, there's only one spe one star system of note there. And it is a, a light blue star sec, or it is a uh, class A. Uh, actually, it is a yes, I believe it is class A. Hang on, I wrote all this stuff down. I am a GM after all. Yeah, it is a class A light blue star. Pierce, it was passed over for the most part just because it was, you know, far more interesting things to look at than a single star system. Just to the data three, there's not a whole lot out there. Is that a Neef, the system? I believe it's Obrith. If it's on the, if I wrote it on the charts, it might that be one, one that theta hasn't three. been discovered. So maybe I don't have it listed for you guys yet. You say the only one in theta three is a Neef, E N I F. Yep. Uh, nope. Then it is one that you have not discovered yet. So time oh, to go explore. Boy. Kind of our thing. It's what we do. <laughs> um, I'm going to be plugging in everything uh, based off any probes or passing passive scans that has been collected from the various starships going through the area that uh, we were able to get from Deep Space 15's database. Okay. Uh, roll me a uh, reason plus science, and the ship will assist with computers plus science. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. 
I can actually, grab the ship. Actually, let's get you guys some momentum, so this will be a difficulty of one. Okay. Um, Astrometrics has a focus. Okay. Well, I succeeded. Well, okay, so you got three <laughs> successes. Uh, cool. <laughs> Two momentum. And but a complication. Yeah, because I haven't gotten... Because I'm not starting with threat, I'd feel more comfortable if I just take that threat. But, but I'm okay with playing out that complication. Shh, shh, sh shut up. <laughs> shh, 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 it's okay. <laughs> now I'll take threat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I am going to make something available to you, uh, oh, Mr. Boy. Moore. Um, just give me a split second here. Um. So, I will send, I am going to make available a system scan document that has a few, that has the known scanned uh, objects. Again, you've, no one's actually spent much time in this system, so there's still puzzle pieces mixed together, but or puzzle pieces yet to be found. But that's a start. All right, sir. Compiling the data that we have thus far, the system seems to be um, a star system around a single star, uh, class A, with... Three, four, five, six, at least seven or eight planets for sure. There's a lot of sporadic data coming through. Um, several uh, Mercury -like type planets. Um, some other system or other planets of uh, note. There's no telling what moon. Mud was talking about because there's a lot of moons in the system. Well, hopefully, when we get closer, we'll be able to scan. Anything else of interest in the sector? In the system? Yes. Um, there's a class Y moon around a planet um, that's a geoplastic planet. Um, there's a planet cooling to a tight class M, but not quite there yet. Um, from what it is, there's a super giant. So, uh, uh, and then a lot of uh, glaciated, barely planets and a very, rather large asteroid field. Hope you're up for the task, Bimrose. Always. Looks like the the asteroid field is rather close to the star, um, so we should be able to not have to deal with it. But again, this is all based off passive scans from various ships. There hasn't been any dedicated work done in the system. Sure, sure, sure. I know the Nighthawk often ran into sensor probes and stuff out here, but... There wasn't a lot of information. Huh. What? I do find it quite strange that there's this many planets around a single star. Just something to note. Well, I guess we'll find out real quick. <laughs> that we will. What were you saying, Captain? I just said, I, we, I guess we'll find out real quick. Oh, I thought I interrupted uh, you before that. No, uh, no, no. Uh, Hendrix? Ideas? Well, I think the detailed scan is probably going to be the first biggest thing that we're going to have to take care of and then go from there. I want to make sure you have a way team ready to go to find the... Uh, Mud and the ambassador, and uh, make sure the doctor's involved. Of course. Plus, we'll have you know we'll have a couple security just in case there's any threat to deal with. Apparently, I heard there isn't much threat going around. 
<laughs> well, that, that could change. He 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 might not have threat now, but remember, we have a Shizno. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if all threatened, I'll just throw Shizno at you guys. TPK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't killed any of the players yet. No, no, I don't think you have. At least not in the Prime Universe. <laughs> no, we're just talking about how you like to give GMs threat. Yeah, that too. Anyways. Hey. Okay. Uh, so you have approximately a five-hour uh, trip at warp. Where would Does anybody have anything they'd like to do? No, I'll, I'll go visit something. the doctor. Oh, sorry, I, I hear Ooh. more going to talk to Ferliza. That wasn't me. Oh. That was uh, Hadrix. Commander. Oh, I'm sorry. I There's two overly cheerful characters. I can't, sometimes I can't <laughs> keep them. Okay, we're having Hadrix going down to see the doctor. Oh, wrong button. Right button. Uh, Dr. Feliza, you are in sickbay. It has been a fairly tame... Uh, couple of weeks the worst being uh, a rather urgent uh, case of indigestion that cropped up during one of the multitude of diplomatic ceremonies that occurred it turns out that ulke rock salt is incompatible with uh, most species uh, digestive tracts oh good yeah good oh that doesn't sound fun no no it doesn't uh Delicious and, going in. Nah, never mind, I won't finish that. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it took the waste processing system at least two days to fully clear itself out. Oof. Anyways, uh, in walks Commander Hadrix. Ah, Commander, uh, to what do I owe this pleasure? I'm still having a little bit of uh, um, tenderness in my um, Achilles, oh, not Achilles, <laughs> in my um, rotator cuff after the. Um, diplomatic incident we had ah um well please um i can surely grab a hypo spray for that it's a simple fix um is there something else you're coming down here for no just trying to check out things you know i don't get to visit as much of this ship with you know between what we had going on with the scorpy and then the diplomatic mission and I like to just be a little more around the people that I'm with and, you know, just try to get people, you know, get to know people a little more that I'm with. Of course. Um, and he'll sort of just uh, grab a hypo spray and head into their office. Um, Dr. Quiff, if you wouldn't mind uh, working in tandem with Lieutenant, eh, Lieutenant Krim for a bit, um... I wanted to have a somewhat private chat with the commander, if that's all right. Uh, of course. Doctor-patient confidentiality and all that. As he wanders past, he stops. Commander Hadrix, I, if I recall correctly, you come from a place far, far away, far distant from this Federation. I do indeed. I come from the Delta Quadrant with at New Talax. Uh, I'd be very interested to if there are any Talaxian home remedies. That is something as much as that was my more my mother's dealing, but I'm, I might have remembered a thing or two. I'll have to think about that. That is perfectly fine. It's often home remedies are the start of actual science. Well, most home remedies in Talex, in Talexian culture, usually revolve around food. So we'll probably have to whip up something. I am very intrigued. And with that, he'll head over to Lieutenant Krim and begin, you know, speaking quietly while working on the bio bed. And so, Ferliz will sort of just walk into their office, sit in their chair. Once the doors close, um, well, I guess my first question is going to be probably one you've heard about, you know, a thousand times before. Um, why travel this far? I mean, the Federation's far from home for you, so why leave? The spirit of adventure, my friend. The spirit of adventure. 
<laughs> I mean, for anybody, really. I mean, what you know, you, what you could stay around your family, you could stay around what you know, but isn't the challenge of being in the unknown more exciting every day? I mean, you don't know what you're going to do. I mean, it's kind of like science or medicine. I mean, you just don't know what's around the next corner. I guess in that we can relate a bit. <laughs> I mean, it's just just a matter of, I mean, yeah, it was a little bit far to go, and, you know, it took a while, but, oh, do I have stories of some of the people I met. <laughs> oh, please, uh, I guess uh, one question begets another. Do you have one for me? Okay, why, why did you pick the Concordia? I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> the new kid on the block, so, I mean, why did you decide to jump over here? Uh, I mean, the possibility of meeting several new species and studying new anatomies in order to help people of all different makes, um, kind of a doctor's dream, if I'm being honest. You're going out into the, you know... Oh, what what did Bashir call that? The frontier frontier medicine. I, I read up a lot about Bashir, especially since the captain has got you know kind of a f the family had an affinity for Bashir. So, you know, of course, it's kind of something you have to pick up on. Yes, that Bashir sure was an interesting one. I mean, he's I mean no different than any one of us, except for well, you know. The few little things. Of course. Um, to my knowledge, there aren't many other Talaxians serving in Starfleet. Um, not to stereotype, but have you ever met, uh, I believe, Neelix was his name? <laughs> People do happen to ask me about that a little often because, I mean, I mean, anybody that hears the story of Voyager knows about Neelix. I've met him once and, you know, he's about as cheerful as he sounds in the stories. Maybe sometimes a little over embellished. If you ask anybody that's telling a story besides Neelix, say very much over embellished. But, you know, <laughs> he's he's a good guy. He is. He just. He walks in a room, he puts a smile on your face. I mean, that's the, the simplest version I can say about Neelix. It just, just warm, warms your heart. Or hearts that... if you're Klingon. Very true. Luckily, uh, I don't think we have any Klingon crew members on this ship. Because those redundant organs, um, those get interesting. Until we make a support character, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, uh, this ship's a little different from the Enterprise, but uh, it's home now. Yep, I mean, wherever you go, there you are. But this is definitely a home, and I kind of, I'm kind of feeling something about this home here. <laughs> I mean, I, I would love to have some of my family back on New Talex be able to see this. And maybe with a subspace array dump or something like that, I might be able to transmit a message since they've got the um, Delta Academy out that way. Well, I'm sure they'd like to hear about some of your expenditures. Adventures. <laughs> nope. Not the right word for Lisa. Not the right word. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Time is good. It's just a matter of, you know, making the most of every single second we've got. <laughs> Speaking of seconds in the Enterprise, how how did that happen? You and Picard and Crusher? Yeah. Um, well, uh, whenever I graduated from the Academy, um, I was lucky enough to have my first assignment be on board the Enterprise. Um, I served under Crusher for I think it was 
a couple years. Um, I guess she some saw something in me, and I mean, we got along swimmingly, it seemed. Um, I believe I'm closer with her than with John Luke, but um, when you work with the someone as long as you worked with the Crusher, uh, friendships develop, and uh, we're about as close to family as we can get. Um, I actually consider John Luke and Beverly's child, uh, Renee, a uh, distant cousin of mine. <laughs> hey, family is where you have it. So, <laughs> oh, I can't tell you how many different families I have around, but you know, oh. that's 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 for a time at the bar. I mean, and he sort of holds up his uh, left hand where you see a ring on his finger. I've got one and. I'm hoping to see them somewhat soon. Uh, I've been trying to get them here on the Concordia, but, you know, when we're traveling in a new expanse of space, uh, getting a spouse on the ship is a little harder than one might think. Yeah, I can kind of understand that. I can understand. <laughs> All right, well, what about this arm? We just got to... Uh, if, if we might be running into some kind of Prepare. potential danger situation, I want to get this, you know... Just make sure I'm good to go. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And he'll just, you know, take out the hybrid spray he had, they had made earlier and uh, nah, might take feels... a little bit to work its way into the muscles, but you should be all set. Ah, good. That's a little looser. Oof. Just remind me not to do any more vaccines. You know, that whole six, what was it, six shots you gave at one point time? I think that gave me a little bug or something. That's kind of the point of a vaccine, Commander. They give you small doses of a sickness in order to help you combat it. I'm sorry that one of them became a little more prevalent, but we'll make sure that doesn't happen again. Good to note. All right, if you need me, I'm going to be up on the bridge with the captain at this point. <laughs> of course. Thank you, Doctor. My pleasure. Now, I bel I heard Moose call. Moose say he wanted to do something? Uh, no. It's okay. Nope. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Nope. Okay. So, approximately five hours or one commercial break later, you find yourselves in the entering the uh, extreme range of the of an uncharted system with a light blue star in the sector Theta 3. And indeed, it is precisely the, or the stars and moons are pretty much what has been previously scouted. Can we pick up their uh, warp trail, just narrow it down? <clears throat> or, uh, you know what I mean? Not yeah. the warp trail, but the, you know, yep. slipstream. The, the corresponder. Mm hmm. Well, you see, that's the problem with this particular system. Now that someone's spending enough time in here, uh, you realize that the star is unstable and is kicking up a stupid amount of stellar radiation, which is preventing both long-range systems and uh, communications from functioning reliably. Am I on the bridge realizing this? Yes. I, I would assume that you're on the bridge realizing this. Captain. Yes. There's a lot of radiation out there. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interfering with every kind of sensor we have. Um, off the top of my head, the best way to try to combat it would be sending out probes to add as little... Um, kind of relay stations for the sensors to pop off or to send out the shuttles and basically scan each system because they'll be able to yeah because they'll be able to, to get through the radiation with protection 
Bridge to engineering. Bridge to engineering. I believe Moose is muted. He has his comm badge off. Ha! Ah, he's deep in a turbo or in a Jeffrey's tube. Zach's or Zach <laughs> yeah, pipes. I was just <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Zach pipes up. Hey, Captain, but what do you want? <laughs> uh, can we program some probes to basically either check out life signs and look for any sort of communication signals of Federation type in the area? I whatever, blue guy. I'll just do it as soon as I find. I think he went into the little ancient human's room. <laughs> Excellent. Launch as soon as possible. Captain out. <laughs> oh, I love okay. it when players talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zax is going to prepare some probes to shoot out. <laughs> Seemingly. Uh, with uh, Moose currently working on you know primary systems and stuff like that ensuring <laughs> that the concordia will survive in this radiation infused hellhole of a sector um moore i've updated the system scan with a few other things that you have learned aha and um if i could please have zax roll me a control plus engineering and one of the other engineers can assist uh this is going to be a difficulty of two yeah, I'm getting to it. <sighs> Captain and always wants Someone wants to pick up one of the other engineering support characters. We have a few here. Uh, could be Kelsos Mad or Mr. Tegan. Uh, I'll I'll pick up uh, Kelsos Mad. Why not? Sure. And this is what task again? Uh, working on <laughs> probes. So I don't think he has much in the way of he does not. No, I think this is the first no. time being used. So cool. Yeah, so, I got flight control, emergency repairs, jerry rigging, power systems, hacking. <laughs> He's just a bridge in a pear tree. I was gonna say, Zax is uh, not doing too hot on this either, but oh. we'll give it a shot. Oh, I guess like I guess I meant what was the uh, attribute and discipline? I know oh, it's engineering. Oh, control engineering. Control engineering. Man, that's a solid 11 for Kelso. It's mad. Hey, that's still above average, so. We're halfway there. Hey, we got two successes. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Ah, so, oh. Mr. Zach. Um, apparently having a seven and a half foot tall serpentine creature who could probably tear you apart with his bare hands is not... You know, you kind of shoo him away after he drips on you a few times. But that doesn't seem to impact your ability to work on the probes and prepare them. So you have a grand total of five probes ready for launch. Send them out. Okay. <coughs> now, because I'm keeping track, where are you sending them to? Um, for the most part, the planet and the moons are accurate enough to the system scan um uh, going pretty... off um i would consider so he's he mud specifically said moon that they were crash landing on he did yes he did so probably i mean there's a y-class moon here which I'm really hoping he doesn't land on that. Um, there's an N-class moon, which would be um, N is high surface temperature, carbon dioxide, very similar to like Venus. D would be is this this one and a bunch up here, which are like our moons. There's a, a type O up here, which is an o a frozen ocean. So I would... I would say probably the class Y, the class N, and the class O to start. Cool. 
Okay. Uh, you fire off the probes towards the atmospheres. And you wait. Now, if um, Mr. Moore, can you please roll me a insight plus science? And the ship will assist with sensor science. Insight science. <clears throat> uh, I'm assuming sensor operations will work here. Precisely, yes. Uh, I'm going to spend a momentum for a third die so that my cautious activates. Okay. Didn't Nothing need, need it. it. That's three successes. Uh, it was difficulty of two, so you get one momentum. And who's got the ship? Uh, I can grab the ship. Why not? Sure. It was uh, computer science or sensor science? Uh, sensor science, please. Sensor science. You got it. Eh, nothing from the ship, but that's okay. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah, precisely. Uh, so after what appears, after a frustratingly long time, despite the fact it's only about an hour or so after launching all the probes and positioning your ship in a convenient place where you can receive their signals. Uh, actually, I'm going to spend some threat. I'm going to spend a threat and create uh, the two threat you gave me. I'm going to create a complication and I need the ship to roll. Um, if someone could please pick up um, uh, Nick's Dallas from Engineering, the the comm officer. Okay. Because you guys need to see if the radiation is interfering with your communications to the probe. Uh, so Nick's Dallas is going to do control. Uh, yeah, control engineering for Miss Dallas or Miss. Yeah, Dallas. And if someone could roll the ship, please, for uh, communications plus engineering. Already. Commun communication systems for a focus? Yes, indeed. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two, which Dallas oh, well. gets. Good for Dallas. Let's see. Communications engineering? <clears throat> yeah. And one for Concordia, so one more momentum. Yay. Nice. Uh, Miss Dallas pipes up. Sir, it's difficult to get a proper, to get a full communications with the probe. But I believe the one sent to the Class N moon is uh, responding with a positive life sign. Uh, human, very faint, and the temperatures are not good for human life. No, no, they are not. All right. Primrose, set course. Let's go check it out. Of course. Okay. Uh, you come across, you come upon the Class N moon, which is a highly, um, which is a basically a hellscape. Uh, extremely high surface temperatures, uh, upwards of several, of a thousand degrees Celsius, which is I don't know how hot in Fahrenheit, but stupid. Uh, the carbon dioxide and sulf and heavy sulfides in the atmosphere from the volcanic erupt continual volcanic eruptions does not make for human life a now that you're close to the planet and using the probe as relay you do detect the you do detect a duranium hull on the planet uh, th thankfully mud seemed to have crashed landed at a on a mountain top or at least close to one so not in the giant lava fields mm. And at this point, you are close enough to hear the repeating distress signal, identifying itself as the Star, as the uh, Slipnir class Starfleet ship Orthos, currently piloted by Lieutenant uh, David Mudd. And some more. Can we get a decent lock on transporters? With the amount of radiation that is come flooding through the system with the stars, I don't know that I would trust the transporter, sir. Hadrix, take Primrose and the doctor and whoever else you want. Get a shuttle. Get them out of there. Should we do use a shuttle or a runabout? 
that's coming from runabout. more. Runabout. Yeah, probably the runabout. I feel like it has a yeah. better shot. <laughs> okay, so let me get the... Uh, Is Reinhardt back? <laughs> are you are you back, Moose? Moose? Oh no! All right, Zax will be going too. <laughs> wow. Well, um, I mean, it's a okay. Venus type planet, so I don't think that more necessarily needs to go. While they go down, I'm gonna. Moore is going to like be fiddling with the sensors and see if he can adjust them to uh, phase out the interference from the star to see if we can get a clearer picture of everything. Okay, that's a j good idea. Uh, let's see. So I just let me get the away team sorted. So we have Moose, or no, we have Hadrix, and yep. I heard uh, the Doctor. Uh, Mr. Hadrix, who else do you wish to bring along? Uh, well, I definitely want to bring security, so I'm thinking Mr. Um, Fennel. All right, Chief, Sec Chief, Tactical Off or Chief Security Officer, we can do that. And I believe it was... Pimrose the, Pimrose the fly, and Zax can cover engineering. All right. Pimrose flying. Now, this is going to be very important. Uh, when was the last time Zack bathed? Stop that. <laughs> that's, that's tough. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll take Tegan as a character on the Tegan. shuttle as well. Okie dokie. From out of the uh, engineering section. He has small craft and transporters and replicators. Good idea. Okay. So we have ourselves an away team. We lost Hadrix. No, he's back. He should be back. Oh, no, he's gone completely. Yeah, like, the... Uh, who knows? Uh, first Moose, now Hadrix. I don't need uh, GM Bullshittery to kill you guys off tonight, apparently. Mm. Uh, there he's back. Yep. Hi, welcome back. Mm. I was going to say, maybe Hadrix won't be leaving, leading this mission. <laughs> oh, no, I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, here's an away team that was assembled uh, in lieu of uh, while you were away. Seems like a perfectly good uh, series of away team. News team, assemble! <laughs> Tegan uh, will help co-pilot. <laughs> okay. So you descend into a very toxic atmosphere. Let me just make sure that I get all the tokens right. And I do. Oh, wrong button. Right button. Ooh. The atmosphere is choked with noxious gases, uh, lightning storms arc across the sky. Uh, it's not often you see us uh, hurricanes forming bet or tornadoes forming between cloud layers, but here they are. Uh, so if I could please ask Primrose to give me a control plus con please and the runabout can assist with engines uh no structure plus con uh what's the difficulty here uh difficulty of uh difficulty three uh, due to the turbulent atmosphere etc cetera, etc cetera. well let's see well with her activation i gave her push the limits ooh, ooh. so whenever there's a, i attempt a contest as increased difficulty due to environmental difficulties which i think this would be part of it correct Yes, I would say so. And then I get to reduce the difficulty by one, so it's only difficulty two. Cool. Ooh. Tegan can also assist, because he's small craft focus and three and con. Yeah, so it's either Tegan or the shuttle. Uh, I guess the question... Uh, I think she's going to rely on the shuttle here. Okay. So. Uh, the shuttle would be just rolling a nine. I know, but she's the one flying the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I, get, I got the shuttle. Um, I'll take a momentum for a third die. Why not? Go for it. Okay, nothing from the runabout. And uh, I've, I've got a couple that would apply here. Hazard avoidance and helm operations. Yes, mm -hmm. either of those would be good. 
And yes, I do have a focus. And that's three Ooh. successes. Nice. So you get that one momentum right back. So it's been a, you know, it's only been a few, mo about a month in game time that you've taken a ship through a turbulent atmosphere. And thankfully, this one's working out rather well. Uh, <laughs> no one's thrown up. Uh, Zach's, or Zach's beard has not caught on fire yet. Yet. <laughs> There's still time. There's literally a volcanic planet below, so you have time. <clears throat> and while we do that, um, I'm just going to get a quick extended task going for more here to get this to improve the sensors. So more moose, uh, anyone who wants to assist with trying to improve the sh the sh the, the, the sensors on the nebula on the southern the on the Sutherland class USS Concordia. Uh, this is going to be a work track of 15. Uh, diff of four, work or resistance of three, and mag of three. Uh, so control science, control engineering, insight science, insight engineering, you know, just science and engineering this thing and, you know, go at it. All right. Um, I'll do the control science. Okay. And because you're trying to improve the ship, the ship cannot assist. Okay. Not to say somebody else can't, but <laughs> makes it so my technical expertise doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I am going to spend a third die to do cautious. Okay. Or, uh, momentum for a third die. Um. Ah, the captain assists. Nice one, captain. I have sensor operations. I have computers. I have reverse engineering as focuses that uh, could sensor. potentially apply. Yeah, sensor ops would work. Nice. Four successes. Nice. So I get that momentum back. You do. Uh, so awesome. ro uh, please roll me six challenge dice. Oh. Ooh. Nice. Um, we're going to spend a momentum to cut down on two resistance <laughs> okay. so that we get a breakthrough. Sure thing. Uh, so that is now going to be a so grand total of six work done. Uh, that was 15, down to 9. Difficulty is going to be a 3 now. Magnitude is going to be a 2. Okay, so that's where we're at for this particular scene. We will we'll come back to you and your... Um, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, you and your uh, sensor foibles soon. Anyways, while they're doing that, the you... The, Amazon class runabout, which you guys really should start naming. Just, you know, give them a person. It's an Amazon class, you said? Yep, Amazon class runabout. I'm so. going to do a quick search. <laughs> That's not its, you know, fan name. It's something else, I believe. I think it's called an aero class, maybe? I don't remember offhand. But I like Amazon, so... Ha. So, what you find... As you punch through the uh, lower clouds, and you head towards the sa the uh, ship, or the source of the distress signal, now coming through crystal clear. There we go. Everyone is ready, and the stream sees everything. Good. Uh, you you crest the top of the hill and come across a large um, obsidian uh, plateau. It would be glassy smooth due to the volcanic uh, nature of everything going on around it, aside from a roughly 200 meter, so 500 foot long gash where a Slipnir class ship uh, decided to do a, or decided to treat it as a water slide. Uh, parts and pieces from the ship litter the uh, landscape. Uh, the nacelles have been completely sheared off. Backs, uh, the back of the hull, or the the rear hull section has separated, and the cockpit section has been uh, di uh, has been forcibly disconnected and launched forward even a little bit further. Uh, you can see that you uh, you can see that the 
interior temperature is a rough is about 40 degrees uh, Celsius, which rough estimates I think puts it about 120, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you see one life one life sign human, and one very weak life sign Medell. Primeros, get us as close as we can safely to the runabout. Understood. That looks quite the perilous predicament. Let's see if we can get our people back. Okay, Shizno just had to drop out due to an emergency. Uh, hopefully everything is fine with him. So... We will carry on without our chief engineer, sadly. Anyways, back to the story. Um, what is your plan, folks? That's a good question. What is our plan, Commander? <laughs> oh, I think the plan is get close to the runabout, um, preferably within a couple of hundred meters of the life signs safely and assess the situation and see if we can get the ship off the ground and get us off the ground too okay uh this is going to be so let's do a, another control plus con uh for you uh, miss primrose all right and the runabout can assist with um engines plus con uh this will be precision flying uh, so that would be a difficulty of three Oh boy, good thing I had the precision maneuvering talent, which reduces it by one. <laughs> I kind of figured yeah, you with, did. Yeah, with this ship's rolls, yeah, that's, you're going to need it. Uh, I'll take a momentum for a third die. I was going to say, if you don't want the runabout to assist and you want uh, Tegan, Tegan. Well, well, that, there's yeah. three. Well, there's your three successes, so you get that momentum right back. Yeah. Okay, uh, you begin to, despite the amount of ash, smoke, uh, wind gusts, uh, temperature inversions, and everything else that's nasty on this kind of planet, you are able to hold the runabout steady at approximately 100 meters, so 300 feet above the uh, orthos. All right, let's get a couple of us down to the ground to take care of the situation. What kind of atmospheric conditions are we looking at right here at the surface? Um, stupidly hot and stupidly toxic. And no ability to beam them up at this point, or oh, do no, we have no. enough range? You are definitely close enough to use your or for Tegan to transport. Well, let's get let's get our people up here. Okay. Uh, hey, sir. If Mr. Tegan could please do me a control plus engineering, and the runabout can assist with sensors plus engineering. Um, you. This is a difficulty three test. If Tegan's going to use a momentum for a third die. Okay. Transporters and replicators as a focus. Okay. Nice. Ooh, of course. <laughs> Oh, let's go. Oh, yeah. So we actually net one. Yeah, five successes. Nice. So that's two momentum. Cool. <clears throat> and look at that. With a freaking nine, go ship. Mm -hmm. So you beam aboard. Uh, let me get back to here. On board the runabout, you get to beam aboard a. Where is Mr. Mud's token? There it is. You beam aboard a very, uh, very red-faced... Um, he's not sweating anymore because he literally has no body fluid left to sweat out. Um, uh, he collapses unconscious. Well, he's still unconscious, I should say. Uh, you also beam aboard... A 
very weak looking Medell. Um, the Medell has is beamed up. Um, its container didn't, or its container must have lost most of its water because whatever water beams up with the uh, with the Medells, identified as Sirius 12, it immediately turns into steam and evaporates, leaving a jellyfish sort of flopped on the deck. And for Lisa will like run over to the two of them and just turns to Primrose like, okay, we got them. Get us the hell out of here. Primrose. Okay, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zex, can you see if we can do anything for our Medeal friend? Medell? Medell. Medell, Medeal, data, data, you know. See if I can rig something. Uh, uh, may I, I suggest know. using the sonic shower as a tub of water. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think I'll try to make a containment system first with the replicator. Okay. But yeah, that's a good idea. We'll keep her wet. All right. Daring goes in. <laughs> Sorry. Out of character, we're trying to save it, not pickle it. <laughs> I don't know. It looks pretty tasty. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard good things about. Dishy. We're not pickling this individual. <laughs> Whatever, fine. Uh, I'll take it and toss it in the shower. Oh, daring plus engineering, please, for you, Mr. Zach. <laughs> to toss it in the shower. Well, uh, you know, to toss it in the shower and prepare a suitable environment for it. Yeah, I say that's daring plus engineering. Difficulty of one. I'm using Jerry Riggin. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is kind of. <laughs> Go for it. Well, there's your one success. Uh, so <laughs> uh, you have successfully uh, Jerry rigged an a uh, water environment for the Medell. Uh, however, it is strongly advised that uh, as you emerge from the uh, ship's head uh, soaking wet, uh, you advise individuals that it is best to hold it in until they get back to the ship. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, if uh, Mr. Uh, Ferliza could please do me a control medicine test on Mr. Mud to uh, stabilize his condition, please. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Uh, this will be a difficulty too. Don't let him die. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, emergency medicine is a focus. Uh, yes, that would work. Huzzah. Um, not taking my chances. Going to take a momentum for a third die. Okay. Okay, yeah, two successes. There we go. All right, uh, so you... Uh, so even a first-year med student at Starfleet Medis Medical would uh, would recognize a severe heat stroke. Uh, basically, the or sorry, no, this is heat exhaustion. That's the worst. Uh, that's the worst of the two, I believe. Either way, uh, get him out of the hot environment, which you've already done. Put him in a cold environment. Uh, give him a little bit of fluids, but not too much to start with. You need to s slowly yep. lower his temperatures, otherwise it will get worse. Yep. Uh, so, with the uh, rear of the uh, runabout dropped to a brisk uh, f eh, 40 some odd degree Fahrenheit temperature, uh, the runabout makes its way back to the ship. I'd like another control plus con test, please, from you, Primrose. Uh, the Either okay. Mr. Tegan or the, sh the ship can assist. Uh, this would be difficulty three, but since you have all those cool nav con talents, that's only difficulty two. Yeah. Well, let's have Tegan assist here. Why not? All right. And control con, daring con. Uh, control con. I don't need no stinking third die. No, you don't. That's uh, four successes in total. So two more momentum. Hmm. 
you make your way back up to the USS Concordia. And uh, just because uh, you guys have actually made it through the first half of this episode a lot faster than I'd like, <laughs> which is actually pretty good. You guys are burning through your momentum, and my GM bullshittery has been dodged so far. So congratulations. <laughs> well, That's thank fine. you. Uh, uh, Moore does want to take another stab at clearing up the sensors. Yep, I was just going to get to you. So, uh, one more roll on those, please. Uh, control sign. I'm in the wrong sheet. <laughs> control. This is a reminder. Science. That's where we're at. Difficulty three. I am going to spend a momentum for a third die. Okay. I do have a focus. And the captain has assisted, and that is th uh, three so successes. I get, uh, four I successes. I get that momentum back. <laughs> you do one momentum. Already and six. Six challenge, challenge die. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say momentum for the re-roll. Okay, re-roll those two zeros. That's six. Um, momentum to burn off two resistance. All right. We'll give us a. That will give you a break. Yeah, it'll give us a fight a breakthrough. Okay. Oh. Where is my bloody roll twenty acting up again for me? Um, there, no, this one. So, uh, so that is a grand total of five. Let's knocked off that, so that brings it down to. I believe that's all that's left. You've managed to do a good amount of work before the shuttle returns. Congratulations. And so, we are going to take a bit of an, er of an early break, uh, partially because I want to see if Shizno is able to come back from his emergency for the second half, and if not, then I need to come up with some more GM bullshittery on the fly. But I'm good at that. So, uh, let's take a about a 15-minute break, so let's be back here roughly quarter after 7, or quarter past the hour, depending on which time zone you're in. And Sounds we'll good. be back momentarily. And we are back. So we are going to cut straight to the next scene. So you are going to lose one point of momentum. We momentum loss. Mm -hmm. Where it is going to be in Sickbay. Where uh, for Lisa Hadrix, <clears throat> uh, two for Lisa's apparently, uh, Series 12 has been locked in or has been uh, put in the science room, which has been currently flooded, or currently waterproofed and sealed with a uh, saline environment. And uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Mud is still unconscious on the bio bed. Captain, you come down to have a look-see at your patients. As soon as I can find your token. Hello, Captain. Captain? I hear you. Oh, no. Capitan. Hello. Hi. Oh, there, there he is. <laughs> there you are, man. Sorry, that was weird. I heard you bumping the mic, but no actual words were coming through. Was well, weird. Very. Anyways, uh, please. I'm sure you were, you know, were saying something extremely confident and whatnot upon entering yeah. Sick Bay. If you could please repeat what you were attempting to say. I will head to the. Uh, uh, is the ambassador conscience? Uh, ambassador is not conscience, or not okay. conscious. 
Uh, both Ferliza and Quiff have looked it over, and you guys believe that it's uh, it's suffered a severe amount of dehydration. Uh, they can live in uh, some pretty a wide variety of saline environments, but boiling water is not one of them. It's a miracle that it's doing this well. Doctor, status report on the two patients? Um, it looks like they're going to need plenty of time to rest, but given some time, I think they'll be just fine. Right. Um, where was the other ambassador that they were supposed to pick up? Uh, probably still back in uh, Yalexi space. Uh, I. Um, they were on. Where's my map? Because that would have been pulled from the ship's computer where they're originally heading, which was. Somewhere. So the Yalexi Protectorate, they were on the planet of Yalex, or Yalex, depending on which way you want to go about it. Okay. Probably. How far a, is that away? Probably mm. six, ten hours at maximum warp. It's like two and a half sectors yeah well sector and a half oh yeah. yeah so flying warp nine can clear a sector in a day so yeah about a day and a bit maybe okay. two and how long did deep space 13 uh deep space 15, 15 sorry uh, roughly the same okay. uh yeah from yalexi to 15 is two full sectors and almost a third <clears throat> i'd like to put zax on uh and well the entire engineering team uh, to possibly salvage the slipstream if we can retrieve any of the ship or anything at so it's not just sitting here. Okay, um, so more teams down to the surface? If they can do something, I mean, I know it's it's not as risky as saving somebody, but if we can transport it up, or I know the radiation was interfering with that, but I mean, it's pretty damaged as is. I mean, picking up what we can and not leaving it here would be, you know, yeah, I'd rather not send anyone, like, okay. down if I don't have to. Fair. Basically, take whatever we can get and, so it's not just leaving here. And honestly, I figured we'll go and finish their mission and set course for um, to pick up the other delegate and then drop everyone off back to Deep Space 15. Okay. Um, so if I could have, I guess Mr. Tegan is the transporter chief. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Tegan can do this. And uh, do you have any momentum? You have one. We have one. Um, if you want to spend that one momentum, I will let two people assist, or sorry, I'll let one engineer and the ship assist, or if you don't want to spend the momentum, I'll just let the ship assist. What's the difficulty? Um, it's going to be a base difficulty two, but however, meant, however many success, this is going to be one of those, however many successes equals how much of the ship you bring up. Gotcha. Um... I mean, I'm personal. Well, I can go either way. Um, Make a choice, because I can have Zach's help with the. I have power systems and stuff like that, and jerry rigging. And technically, I gave him his his project, so we can work together. I can assist. Okay. Yeah, we can do. Then we can do the momentum so that we can get Zach's and the ship to access. Okay. To assist. okay. Sure, so we will have um, Mr. Nope, not Hadrix. I don't need Hadrix. He's in sick bay. Uh, next up is. Yeah, so if Mr. Tegan and Mr. Zach. Uh, Tegan, if you could please roll me control engineering. Uh, Zach, you can assist with control engineering, and the ship will assist with uh, sensors engineering. Tegan's got one. Mm hmm. Zach's got a sub to three. Nice, nice. Ship. 
And who's got the ship? Oh, I'll grab the ship. All right. And I missed that. What am I rolling for the ship? Uh, control. Uh, sorry, sensors plus engineering. Okay, four successes. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, so give yourselves two momentum from that. And the amount that pops. So you are able to retrieve. Uh, where is this looking? Uh, so the material, the cargo uh, shuttle, or the cargo bay transport. It takes a couple goes, uh, widening the containment beam, uh, twiddling the buzzard collectors, uh, t teaching the uh, deflector dish how to tap dance, that sort of stuff. But you're able to beam up about 75% of the ship. Uh, that includes nice. the front, uh, the rear compart, uh, the, uh, the cockpit, the rear, as well as one of the nacelles. It is still somewhat assembly required, but... At least you have most of it. Works. Okay. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to do? More just has to finish the, the scan. Sure. Finish the scan, please. Uh, oh, control science, yeah. insight science, whichever ones you want. Act daring science if you want to be fun. And the ship... Uh, no, the ship still can't assist. Ship has it. Yeah. But the, the hands on, can. Mr. Captain. <clears throat> Difficult to. I'll spend a momentum for a third die. Okay. And we'll let. Hey, yeah. Well, well, I am definitely going to use my cautious to okay. reroll. All right. So far, that's only one success. Let's see how we do. Okay. Well, I got the two successes. <laughs> that's, you got the two. That's all you need. Uh, roll me some challenge dice, please. Nice. Um, Six successes. Last momentum to shave. Uh, well, no, actually, we wouldn't need it. Oh, yeah, we would. We'd be one yeah. short. Yeah. Last momentum to shave off two. Okay. Last momentum to shave off two. Uh, by... Uh, by f uh, fiddling, uh, by fine-tuning the sensor array to filter out the noise caused by the sun's solar radiation, you are able to filter out about 75% of the noise, which is probably as good as you're going to get with this type of system. But that is still enough for you to find a couple things. So, uh, as y'all are on the bridge, <clears throat> Commander Hadrix. You come back up to the bridge just in time to hear Ensign Moore. Or, uh, sorry, I should say what Ensign Moore sees first, and then he can relay it as necessary. Uh, so, Ensign Moore, you find in the turbulent atmosphere of the planet, uh, you're seeing several, they appear to be static weather positions. Uh, like, it, it would be like a tornado that isn't moving. Uh, nor is it dissipating or gaining in strength. Uh, by your count, you see approximately 96 of these things peppered throughout the planet's at or the moon's atmosphere. I'm guessing if, as Hadrix comes onto the bridge, you'll just see more like a, a very visibly puzzled face uh, as he's looking through the data going, trying to decipher and trying to calculate what could be causing this. So he won't speak up necessarily right away. Ensign, what's with the WTF face? <laughs> <laughs> well, Commander, this isn't <laughs> making <laughs> scientific... S oh, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Just go yeah, with I don't think, I don't think I don't think Hadrix has Captain, a WTF it, idea. it's not making sense. It, it it's not making sense. The I was able, we were able to clear up the sensors, which was awesome. It, we're detecting a lot of static weather patterns on the. Pl so are you saying they aren't moving? They're not. 
this is something man-made? Uh, not to be, hypothes- not to be species, not to be speciesist. But... Um, that's the running hypothesis. There's nothing that I can think of that would cause a weather phenomenon to stay put, not gain in strength, not weaken, but just stay stay in one spot. There ha- the only thing I can think of is there's something controlling the weather phenomenon, which means the greenhouse effect of the planet could be somewhat artificially con- being made of the moon. Hmm, that seems kind Can of we interesting. S- set... Hmm. Well, if I'm going to put up on the viewer the uh, overlay <laughs> of, the view with the, of the moon with the 96 uh, static weather uh, mm-hmm. phenomena. All right. Captain, Commander. Imrose, move us in closer, but a safe range. All right. Sir. And more. Uh, see if, or not more, um, uh, we have a communications expert now, don't we? Uh, yes. Nix. 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 Lieutenant Nix, see if you can pick up any sort of communications or signals of any kind coming from the phenomenon. Very well. Um, So how low do you want the ship to go? That's the question here. Uh, not in or not in to the planet. Okay. I want to okay. stay above. Yeah, I don't want to bring us into the planet. Aw. Okay. Um. So. Um. That's so easy. I'm. Well, you need momentum. So this will be a zero test for Primrose. Uh, if Primrose could please roll me a control plus con. Mm-hmm. And if Miss Nix could please roll me. Um. Uh, let's roll insight plus engineering and the ship can assist with sensors plus engineering and this is going to be a difficulty of four i don't see nix's sheet uh it's dallas nick or nix dallas uh she's oh i've got her i've got her sheet up i didn't realize that was that who that was i was looking for last name nix are we going with uh, communication systems as a focus that would work See and then the is that contest difficulty four as well or no? I uh, don't nope, nope. This is uh, your contest is to, uh, zero difficulty. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so and who's got the ship for Nix? Okay, so well, Primrose, Primrose got three. Nice. Jeez, Primrose. Primrose, this ship flies like a dream in your in your uh, multi-spored hands. So that's a very interesting image in my head of how. Yeah, me too. I'm kind of, I'm a little as uncomfortable look, right now. <laughs> as I look down at my hands and go, "How would that work?" I mean, her hands are literally just you know multi-cellular that can be controlled. So she, I don't know how does how does she work the controls there. Uh, um, Spencer, does she just sort of lay out an appendage, touches the panel, and then all the spores spread out and manipulate it, or does she have like fingers and stuff? I, I think she has fingers. Okay. Okay, so um, Nix, your the sensors are unable to penetrate the atmosphere, even with um, Moore's additional uh, uh, upgrades to the sensor array. Uh, she can't detect anything, communications or otherwise, around those anomalies. Uh, Primrose, you have brought her in like a dream. It's like that parallel park everybody wishes they could do, but no one seems to be able to, to do. <laughs> right? Yeah.
Okay. Uh, I'm going to hop out of my chair and go to the other side of more. Okay. Um, and all right, Primrose, move her in slowly. Captain, given the planet's atmosphere, that does not seem wise. Primrose, I would, I would go with, with the captain's suggestion. I think the ship is a little more hardier than it leads on to be. I agree. And this is too interesting to let go. Sir, what do you think? All right. Let us... Um, try a full sensor sweep using tachyon particles and bombard bombarded with tachyon particles and as soon as we hit into the planet's atmosphere and see if we can see any traces or anything else that we might be able to latch on to and okay. i am going to lead this and I am going to run a uh, science sensors okay. with fascination of the unknown. Ah, interesting. <sighs> okay. True. Fascination of the unknown, your value? Yes. Nice. It is a value. I was going to say, I have one that there's always something new to discover, so... <laughs> And actually, the commander would actually go want to go down and actually, whether from his station right there in the center or down there by Primrose, the commander wants to go ahead and help her out with the navigation. Okay. Mm, that's going to be a solid negative from Primrose. Okay. Uh, so that's, got it. that's three degrees of success. You only needed a two, so you get one momentum out of that. Oh, wait. Oh, I... sorry. No. Uh, Scotty needs to roll the assist. He needs to roll the assist. Yeah. So Plus, I, I'm I... doing my automatic success. So, so that's four. So you get two momentum already. Uh, computers, physics. So I have a focus. Sensors, operations. Okay. That's the five degrees. Okay. Nice. So five successes, uh, three momentum. Uh, so, as uh, Commander Hadrix moves down to sort of push aside uh, Primrose to attempt to assist her in bringing the ship down, um, both uh, Moore and uh, Bashir, you notice a significant amount of del I think it is a uh, delta wave energy uh, emanating from those storms, and they're being directed straight towards the ship. Um, Del I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, um, but Delta, I'm calling Delta Wave Energy the psionics, like they're used for Beta Z and other telepathic species. That sounds about right. Yeah, it's one of those waves. Brain patterns, yeah. Associated with deep sleep or coma. Can, can Primrose, like read that on her console anywhere i don't believe she has access to the science systems is that information relayed to her yes <laughs> as you say we're obviously we're obviously like that's why i said i moved from across from him because we're getting all sciency over here and i'm sure we're going going back and forth so absolutely so the captain is there and i am <laughs> at my spot <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, and it's, you said it was headed towards the ship? Uh, yes, it's Damn, being directed towards, towards yeah. the ship. Nope, nope. Primrose is getting us out of the atmosphere. Okay, daring plus con, please. All right. Difficulty of two. Have we heard of any um, telepathic species going berserk right now? Or hearing things? <laughs> I 
None of the support characters, I believe, are Vulcan, Beta Z, or otherwise. So, no, I don't believe so. Let's see, um, he said it was difficulty two. Mm-hmm. How do we? Know? Well, Travis is a Vulcan, but that's is oh, this? There's a Vulcan named Travis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's at the bottom of the support character. Oh, like, man, no uh, the bartender. There. Anyways, uh, sorry. Man, I don't, something. I don't think either of my talents apply here. No, probably Damn. not. Sorry. Oh no, it's okay. Um, I'll take. Yeah, you can, you can I'll use take... your uh, activation oh. for avoiding oh. commands. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she see, she sees that, and she sees danger. She's. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I'll it's take. Being, we're picking up what's being directed at us. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll take three momentum for two extra die. Sure. Because that sounds uh, kind of an important thing. Pulling away, can the captain and I figure out where it's being directed from? Uh yes. Each of those static weather systems. 39 of them are putting, like, data... data what? <laughs> Something like that, yes. Um, okay. Uh, Primrose, you move... Uh, you tap your way through the system. And the... Uh, the structural integrity field kicks into overdrive, and the inertial dampeners aren't quite fast enough to catch... Uh, to uh, compensate. As you all lurch uh, back a step or two as the ship heads up and begins to accelerate to half impulse to get out of that. It's at this point that uh, Lieutenant Finil pulls his phaser and tries to shoot the captain. Oh, good! Wait, who's aiming at the captain? Finil. Lieutenant Farrell. The Bolian security our chief. Yep. Our security guy. Can Lagos? Oh, oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> Lieutenant <laughs> Lieutenant Legs is right in the way. So <laughs> <laughs> Lagos. <laughs> nah, nah, he's Lieutenant Legs. <laughs> it is. He's got legs. <laughs> well, if you remember, even his creation, we were talking about putting him in one of those next generation skirts. So he had oh God, the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so Captain, that is definitely a hit. So we are going to roll me some challenge dice. Uh, let's see. Phaser of six, security of four. I believe that is six challenge dice to the Captain. Cool. Uh, that is six non lethal damage to you, Captain. <clears throat> I believe that's enough to take uh, that's you a, out. That, I think five is uh, a median stun, so yeah. <laughs> if memory serves. So, yep. So we're all over here sciencing, and I get knocked unconscious. Yep. Again, three <laughs> sessions in a row. Gee, huh. Okay. <laughs> uh, he <laughs> then waves the phaser at Primrose and shouts, take us back in. And at this point, the bridge is going to be in combat order. Good. Great. Okay. Combat is... Here we go. And Finel is already done his turn. Uh, so, and the captain oh, yeah, is yeah. currently out cold. But yeah, someone, captain could... doesn't have a turn. <laughs> yeah, sorry, captain. Uh, maybe you can play Legos. Yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> or Nyx. Either or. Lego my Legos. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, so, uh, who wants to go next? Um, I'm sure, you know, Primrose's bridge crew has a phaser on her, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I assume that pretty much everyone has a phaser within axis of their station. I'm oh, assuming what? Morse is underneath the Yeah, it's, you know, it's a quick release kind of thing uh, under the counter and you have a phaser. Boom. See, um, yeah, so um, oh, Primrose, is, Primrose is going to pull her. F I sure would Primrose have a type two or just a type one? Uh, 
I They're full type twos. Like it's, they did it in one of the comics, and yeah, underneath the control panel, it's like a glove compartment thing that like you just tap, and the little tray comes out, and it's a regular classic type two phaser. I mean, okay. I've, I've never seen any reason beyond you know the purpose of you know stealth missions to carry type ones. So okay, so type two. Sure. Okay. Yep. And and she'll. Before she fires at Fennel, she's just like, Commander, step away from my console, and she'll fire at Fennel. Okay. Uh, control security, please. Difficulty two. Yeah. Um, I shall take a momentum for a third die. So noted. I don't have a focus here. Pew, pew. That's enough. Hey. Uh, Let's we'll... see, it's a, for what's the base damage for a type two? I believe two plus. It's two, two plus three. security. Oh, three. two plus security. Nope, sorry. Three plus security. Three security. Okay. Uh, so so that's five. five. Hey! <laughs> wow. Nice! Uh, so, with one smooth uh, uh, spin of your chair, you manage to point your phaser directly at Finil, and he slumps unconscious. Okay, uh, who's next? Uh, I will. Okay. And I will shoot Primrose in the back. <laughs> okay, uh, control security, please. Nice. My first officer has my back. <laughs> well, he's got primroses, that's for sure. Uh, challenge dice, please. And keep in mind that your uh, Togalau thing can be used to gain an advantage of, quite frankly, a heck of a lot of things there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's only Dang. three. Okay. Uh, so that's only three points of stress to you, Primrose. So you can, oui. Yeah, you diffuse that along your... Uh, well, flavor, flavor it for me. Give me a good Togalau how you, you know, manage to I, avoid a point-blank phaser yeah. shot. I, I'd like to imagine she still sort of takes it, but now, like, some of the uh, spore-like things have now become sort of, like, bioluminescent. Okay. And she just turns Ooh. to look at the commander. Okay. Okay, so... I believe it is Legos, Moore, or Nix's turn. Nix will just go up to him and basically cuff him or whatever she has available. Oh, like cuff an L? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so a melee attack? Well, he said he's down, right? He's he, I think he's so talking about Fennel. Fennel. I'm sorry, Fennel. I was not paying attention. Okay. Yeah, Nix will basically she's, uh, will just take him you know, basically put his arms behind his back and secure him in some way. Okay, that is Nix's turn. Um, Finnell or, nope, not Finnell, Lagos or Moore. You currently have a potentially crazy Hadrix. Hey, Lagos, pew pew. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> okay. And I think, what, we said uh, the captain was taking over Lagos? Yeah. Uh, captain, do you have Lagos' this sheet? I was heading Nixas up. Ah. Yeah, n n no uh, test needed for Nix to go on a clap. Yeah, that clap. was the one. Well, <laughs> I didn't realize that before. Sorry, uh. I, I, I'm sorry. I should, probably should have been clear on that. My bad. Okay. What's legs under, anyway? Uh, probably security. <laughs> security. When I made him, I wasn't expecting legs to be what he's called. <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> he's, he's legs now. <laughs> you found the picture. You're going to have to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Legos will... Uh, Legos. <laughs> All right. So let's... Uh, shoot. Okay. Control um, I, yeah. No, shoot was just not me actually I know. shooting. I, know. I was just basically, yeah, he'll pull his phaser, but at the same time, just like. 
ready it honestly more than anything of actually because with fennel down um i think he's going to side with the commander oh interesting excuse you interesting okay uh ensign moore uh more seeing all this is just going to kind of put his hands up go what is happening here why are we shooting like we can wait a moment. Ensign, we need to do what we need to do. We need to go back into the atmosphere. No, we don't. Why do we need to go back in the atmosphere, Commander? It is where we need to go. Um, the ship what? can only do so much in atmosphere, though. Yes, I am highly aware of the ship's capabilities. Come on, it's me. Don't you trust me? Right now? No. To be frank, I don't know who to trust. At all. And just because... If you would be more specific on why we need to go in there, I might be able to assist you from here. We can't take the ship too far into the atmosphere or it won't get out and we don't want to lose all of the almost 800 souls on the ship. Captain, roll me fitness medicine, please. Difficulty two. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Anyways, carry on. This ship will do as it's needed to do, and it will be able to survive. Remind me what the momentum spend is to keep the initiative. Is it two momentum? I believe two. it is two momentum, yes. Okay. Uh, Primrose just turns to the commander. From my experience, this isn't you, commander. Of course it is me. And he grins. It is the most insincere smile you've seen out of him. <laughs> Ever. I keep the initiative and shoot him. I was going to say, well, I haven't done my action. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I that's just, true. I was just talking. I wasn't sure what you were doing. Off, but as soon as, soon as Hadrix does that, Moore's going to fire. <laughs> I love it. Let's get a court martial, everybody. <laughs> Control, security. I, uh, I'm i taking a third die. Okay. Do it. Keep in mind, you I have, have, if you don't move, you ca probably have taken the time to aim. Yes. Which is definitely or, a thing. Yes. Ha! <laughs> Sounds like you might need hey. that. Yeah. Does I aim do a re yeah? Aim does a aim, doesn't it? Aim lets you reroll one. If it, I think it's with uh, the only difference is with phaser rifles. It has the accurate quality, That's which right. lets you reroll all of them. Yeah, that eh, doesn't it's do it any enough. good. So that could goes. could do your determination. <laughs> True. Mm. <laughs> uh, maybe next round. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Maybe next round if uh, Primrose's keep the initiative doesn't work. So. Yeah, I keep the initiative. I'm shooting this. I'm shooting the commander. <laughs> Go for it. There's a All phrase right. you didn't expect to say at the start of this uh, session. Yeah. Um, I shall. I will give you a threat for a third die. I like threat. Sure. Ooh. Okay, nice. that's enough. Roll challenge dice, please. Yeah. Gladly. Let's go. Primrose is apparently a sharp shot. <laughs> All right. Uh, Commander Hadrix, you make a last ditch lunge to hit the engage on the uh, panel, only to find that you run r right into Primrose's uh, shooting. And you 
smack your head on the console as you are stunned. Oh, goody. Right. I mean... <laughs> Oops, uh, let's knock you unconscious. And because I think it's a good, good time for this, uh, Captain, you wake up. You have a hell of a headache. <clears throat> and about this time, uh, you hear a... us all having phasers locked onto each other. <laughs> Mexican standoff. <laughs> At this point, uh, the comms channel, or uh, sorry, Lieutenant Lagos's uh, security station pipes active. Uh, hello, hello. Is this thing on? Uh, this is Doctor Quiff in sick bay. Uh, can you? Please send down some of those security chaps. Uh, the doctor's not himself. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. More hearing that will hit the comm panel at his uh, station. We're busy up here! <laughs> well, yes, that's understandable, but fine. I will... He's... I will wait. I will wait. Okay, let's. Uh, mm. If you need to okay. sedate him, <laughs> they said Legos is going to shut that off real quick, um, and then the captain's going to get up, and it's like all decks, security to the bridge. Question, GM. Yes. Okay. I have an idea for the next round. Okay. And I move. do apologize. Um, the doctor is... You do not get that thing from Quith. I apologize. My apologies. That did not happen. Um, yeah, so what turn do you wish? Uh, currently, all hostels are... Um, is Lagos going to be hostile or not? Or we don't know yet. Lagos was going with the fact that it was com uh, Commander Hedricks. He was following, you know. Oh. All right, Captain was taken out. Now the Commander was taken out. And yeah. Because <laughs> um, what War was thinking about doing is pulling security... Um, commands over and firing phasers into the storm anomaly. See if they can disrupt one of the send it down in there and disrupt something. Kind of a Hail Mary. Lago, stand down. Uh, I'll, we'll, I'm with you more. Uh, we'll move uh, security over and fire. Okay. So, uh, at this point, uh, if someone could pick... Uh, so, my apologies. Um, I crossed a line... Uh, sorry, I'm going to metagame slightly here. Uh, break GM wall. I crossed a line with that Spencer was not willing to cross. I apologize to Spencer. Um, so, Spencer chose... I had wished for Spencer to be possessed as well, but that was a line he did not want to cross. So I'm retconning that part of this with my apologies. So, anyways, uh, you get a call from Dr. Ferliza from Sick Bay. Yes, Doctor. It's the Lieutenant. Uh, from, from Ferliza's point of view, uh, what's Mud doing? Uh, Mud got up and immediately tried to attack the nurse with a scalp with a, a hypo scalpel oh good um and you also have noticed that uh as well as you know being boiled alive there was enough cell there was residual cellular damage on the ambassador that to indicate that it was attacked with a phaser good um 
<clears throat> Cut. <laughs> Let's see. Um, send send security personnel down when you can. I'm going to try and handle things, but I don't know how it's going to go. All right, Doctor. We need to take over the bridge and figure out we'll be down as soon as we can. Uh, me and Ensign Moore are going to try something. Hopefully this works. Okay. Uh, so, you attempted to shoot at one of the weather patterns. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, can you roll me some chip challenge dice damage, please? Oh, I don't have to roll for the shot. Okay. Oh, uh, I thought that's what Largos was doing. Oh. Well, we can do that. I don't know. But... Sure. I'm sorry. I'm trying to balance three things at once here. I may have uh, slipped a plate. Well, me and me and Moore, ca as in Captain and Moore, are going to try... Pull, we're transferring security over to the science, okay. and we're going to fire the phasers at one of the um, uh, weather patterns. Okay. Okay, then this will be... Lagos is... Lagos is confused as hell, and now that the captain's up, we'll listen to the captain. Okay. <laughs> but he was going with ha uh, Hadrix because he was in command. Fair enough. Primrose will just put her phaser back in the thing and close it. Um, more in order to fire is going to burn determination with the, I've got this! <laughs> Okay, that's fine and dandy. Because we'll see if he actually has it. We'll, we will. So control plus security. Well, that's I got three. You got three. <laughs> okay. Uh, ship can assist. Because I think it's funny, we're going to do weapons plus science. Ooh. Alrighty. I can, uh, I can roll for the ship. All right. Uh, this would have been a difficulty. Yeah, difficulty two. So that's four already. Hey, uh, ship assist. Yep, four total, so two momentum. <clears throat> Woo! Uh, you blast the phaser into the... Uh, at least one of the weather patterns. Uh, anyone keeping a close eye... Well, actually, there isn't a close eye. As you... As the beam intersects the weather pattern, uh, down in sick bay, Mud screams. Up on the bridge, Hadrick and Finnell scream. Does Mud do the same down in Sick Bay? I yes, Mud does that in Sick Bay. I'll come up to the bridge. Um, whatever you did, it worked. Uh, well, your readings indicate that the be the delta wave beams. Uh, heading to the ship, uh, falter. And but as you break out of the atmosphere, you find that the delta fields are far weaker up here. Uh, only now, well, roughly one fifth or so of the uh, field strength. What's your next order, Captain? Primrose. Back us up. Keep backing us up. <laughs> of course. All right. As you continue to back up out of orbit, uh, approximately uh, 20,000 kilometers or so away from the moon, so roughly the distance between, or half distance between the moon and the planet, um, whatever the heck was inside... Uh, Mud, Finnell, and Hadrix are dissipating. And are you guys keeping them chained on the bridge, or are you going to drag them down to sickbay for proper analysis? Or a science lab? I'm not picky. <laughs> yeah, um, I called security team up. 
and we'll take them down to the med bay. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Where are we getting probed? Brain probes. Okay. Down in sick bay. Sick bay, which is probably the most crowded it's been. Um, keep in mind, this should be a scale five sick bay, not the scale four, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, anyone else care to come along here? Nope. Okay. Just the captain. Hey. The ensign's got the bridge. Yeah. Ensign Moore, apparently, you have the bridge. <laughs> Well, Lieutenant Argos Lagos might be in command. He does exist, but... Well, that's true, although Moore is senior... Well, I guess Lagos is senior officer, too. Well, that, that's up for the captain to decide. Uh, Ensign Moose, or not Ensign Moose, Lieutenant <laughs> Commander Moose makes his way to the bridge. <coughs> Dr. Forza, Hedrick Sus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand that, command, uh, Captain. Oh. Sorry, and Dory. <laughs> ah. uh, surprisingly I... enough uh, Mud is awake and much more calm now uh, he is far he is much uh, he has um, turned into his more usual skin color and is attempting to crack jokes with a not so um, uh, uh, yeah. a not so enthused Krim that's the word I was looking for thank you um <laughs> Saying, please, uh, I'm just thirsty. It's not like I'm going to attack you this time, I promise. Uh, not the kind of jokes I'll be making, Lieutenant. Uh, he smiles. Well, when we get back to uh, Cerberus Station, I know this lovely bar, and it's not the Eclipse. T please, I'll, let me make it up to you. I, I just give them, like, you know, parent eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he just lies back and I have a pounding headache um I will uh take a, I'll take a hypo spray and uh we'll we'll start with don't waking up the command well, yeah, I know I'm waking him up okay don't knock uh, mud unconscious but um uh, I'll, we need I'll, to start by, <laughs> I'll start by waking up the commander all right Commander, you were in a very weird hellscape of what it always starts as a wonderful dream, probably you and your family, and then it slowly gets corrupted. And just as it gets the worst it could be, it's over and it starts afresh until finally you wake up and you realize this is not a dream. And you realize, oh, Ferliza, it's nice to see you. Oh, for Lisa. Oof. God, I got a headache. Well, it's good to have you back. Probably fix stream, I apologize. You are you, right? Well, I'm not you, so yeah, I'm me. Okay, that sounds like him. Um... I know you had said earlier that it seemed like Sirius 12 had been shot with a phaser. Are yep. they dead? No, they're not dead, but it was a near thing. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Their uh, Medell physiology, is, despite their apparent flimsiness, they have, they're like Klingons. They have redundant lots of things. So, yeah. Got it. So, same, same sort of thing, just needs... Bed rest? Cube rest? I don't know what those things sleep in. <laughs> okay. Um... Quality tank time. <laughs> TLC. Tank love and care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Doctor, can um, I get a stim too? I just got stunned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think most of those people are going to need that. And... I'll give the captain a quick stem and then uh, let's let's wake up the lieutenant. Yeah, I'd like to. While he's doing that, I'd like to go have a little conversation with Mister Mud. Okay. 
uh, you are going over there. Dr. Quiff stands aside and ensuring that there are no sharp objects next to Mr. Mud. You stand back. He wearily gets, sits up again and attempts to comically salute, but it doesn't work, and he just lies down again. Captain? So, how you feeling? Better now. I remember crashing on a... I remember the quantum slipstream machine have, faulting out. Us flying through space at an appreciable speed of light. Seeing a it was either hit this system or coast for eternity in void space. So I did what I could. It hurt. And then some voice inside my head. I don't know what happened after that. Well, I just had half my bridge crew shoot me. Um, oh. Can you give me anything else? A desire to be free? And some, for, some sort of... It's like I wanted something so badly I didn't care what got in my way. I'm sorry, sir. I don't... I don't know what to tell you, sir. All right, get some rest. Lieutenant, keep an eye on him. So at this point... Commander! Phil immediate, or Finnell immediately sits up, immediately reaches for his phaser, realizes his phaser isn't there, realizes where he is, and sits back... or lies back down. Meanwhile... Commander Hadrix. Yes. You are being approached by the captain. Yes, captain. It's... So, any particular reason you took over my bridge? Just an overwhelming thought to go into the atmosphere I just I don't know what's going on I've seen many weird things in my life but I don't know Finnell I was angry angry at being Chained? That's not right. I'm free. <laughs> well, you shot me, and <laughs> luckily it was a stun setting. We'll see about your freedom. <laughs> uh, he His uh, blue skin blanches a pale, uh, blanches to pale at what you say. And he nods his head. Sorry, sir. I will accept whatever uh, punishment you deem acceptable. Get some rest. Seems we have something more going on here. My recommendation, sir. Put a buoy in this system and don't look back. Do we have enough photon torpedoes to blast the planet to pieces? That'd be my recommendation. And with that, he lies back down. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to head back to the bridge. All right. Captain, back to bridge. Dr. Quiff. Any one-liners from any of anybody before we change scene? 
Oh, um, I know I wanted a nap, but not this way. And, he, <laughs> and, then, and then the commander sets his head back down on the pillow. All right. That's that's a pretty good one. Back on bridge. Yeah, Doctor, if you hit if anything else, report to me immediately, obviously. Of course, Captain. Back on the bridge. Uh, let's see. He's not here, nor is he. Yeah, wrong button. Nope. Trying to get tokens all over the bloody place on so many bloody different layers here. Okay. Captain, you're back on bridge. Commander... Or Lieutenant Commander Moose, who is still not on the token layer, yeah. because I am it's doing okay. that he's... there. He's relieved. <laughs> he stands up, Captain, <laughs> and not seeing a second officer, he'll sit down in the office in uh, Hadrix's chair. Moore is running every scan and analysis of yep. all the data that we collected to see if we can figure <laughs> out what the heck happened. Yep, I'm with you. I said, I'm going, I'm not even taking the chair. I'm going straight over to the science station. Okay. Um, So, Ensign, what the hell was that? Obviously, whatever the Delta Waves just took over, a good chunk of the true. I don't have any patterns of who took was taken over. uh, So this is going to be a reason plus science. And this can either be assisted by the captain's reason science or the ship's computer science. Or data analysis. If we analysis. do the ship's computers, I have technical expertise, mm. yeah. and I have a computer's focus. That sounds good. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three. Yeah. So let's. Uh, uh, not that I don't love the assist from the captain, but with having technical expertise and a computer's focus, I'm going to buy and cautious. I'll buy a third die. All right. I'll buy a third die because that gives me two re-rolls. Cool. All right, so if someone could please roll the ship's computer science. And reason science from you, Mr. Moore. Wow. <laughs> you don't. You could re-roll one of those ones, hope for a crit, but, you know, other than that, that's four successes. So one momentum already. And, ship. Sorry, who's got the ship? I got the All ship. All right. No one needs a re-roll. Five. You need a re-roll. You need a re-roll. Yeah. I mean, the ship could re-roll if it really wanted to. Yeah, it could, but... But we got two, we got two momentum out of that, so mm-hmm. that's all that matters. Okay, so what you have decided, or what you've discovered from the looking over a approximately three or four hours worth of sensor logs is that the lightning that's arcing through the sky is actually following a predetermined pattern instead of you know, lightning just being lightning. It seems to be moving in and around the st- the stable weather patterns. And as it encompasses each weather pattern, uh, it only does so for a fraction of a second each time. But once it does so, you see that the delta signals emanating from those nodes uh, weaken to nothing. So what, it's, what the lightning is doing is sapping in other words this sort of energy it's like a prison and more will say that out loud it's like a prison <laughs> moose looks at his panel nods yep can we <clears throat> doctor is there yes. any way to tell who was affected and is there a pattern to who was affected? Um, due to well, only having a few subjects, I can't really tell at the moment at at the moment, but I can certainly start working on it. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Uh, insight plus medicine for you, Mr. Doctor. Yeah. And either Quiff or the ship could assist, whichever you wish. Uh, this will be a difficulty three test. Yep. Um, I think 
Yeah, it'll probably be the ship assisting here, because it seems like we're doing more of a ship-wide scan sort of thing. Okay. Uh, so the ship will assist with computers plus medicine. Mm-hmm. Not to um, mention, I'm sure other people have come in with a headache. Yeah. And... Yeah, other, other telepathically sensitive individuals have definitely come in requesting uh, assistance with a headache. Thankfully, though, it, they have decreased since leaving the planet. Yeah, uh, I'll take a momentum for a third die. All right. And do not have a focus here. Need it. That's three successes for you. Huzzah. Uh, who's got the ship? Oh, I got it. What are we looking? Uh, computers plus medicine, please. There you go. Okay, that would be four. So that's one momentum for you guys. Cool. Uh, so this is only a hunch based on your computer's heuristics, uh, your medis based on psychological profiles uh, alongside with uh, brain patterns and, you know, other jargon. Um, but you have come to the conclusion that of those infected uh, or chosen, um, uh, Finnell had the or Finnell Finnell had power. Uh, Hadrix had command, and Mud was present. So they just seemed to be looking at those who could best enact whatever plans they had, which seemed to be through force. Uh, it seems that whoever was taken over by these waves, Captain, um, had power in some extent. Whatever those waves had in store for us, or whatever entity was on that planet, it wasn't a good thing. It almost seems to me like they would maybe try and raise a small army. I'm not sure. Hmm. Thank you, Doctor. Appreciate it. Not a problem. All right. We still have the five probes in the area. Yes, you do. Well, once, well, you sort of sent them to the planet's surface, so you probably have about two remaining. Where the where they go, they don't come back. <laughs> but yes, you have you currently have two and a literal starship's worth of resources to make more. So sure, yeah. I want to call those probes back and send them there. Okay. Um, want to find out more. But I can't risk the crew. Fortunately, Captain, I think the risk outweighs the reward in this case. I tend to agree. I want to put up a beacon. I want to. I want to write down. I want to uh, jot down the coordinates and basically put up a beacon, not to enter the atmosphere. Okay. Uh, for any pass by ships, and like a, like a forty thousand mile quarantine. Yeah, basically, that this ship is quarantined. Um. Yeah. Moon. Planet Moon. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but yeah, I want to keep the probes there and keep them collecting data, patterns, anything like that. Okay. Just eh. hopefully you come back in a year and something may happen. Or you may have more info. More information. But. It's too dangerous to go back and try to play with it. I think I... Oh, I want to, though. 
Captain Science wants to play. But no. Uh, Penrose, set course to the other ambassador. Um, we'll swing by, pick them up, and then deliver them to everyone to uh, Deep Space 15 for their meeting. Basically a little weak adventure to get do all that and get back to where we were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, the, li- the great library will wait, and it will be there. Yeah, it's back. as curious as I am about that too. Like I said, let's finish a uh, Mud's mission for him and take him back to Deep Space Fifteen. Okay, uh, so that is the plot. Does anyone have any scenes they'd like to do? Um, no. Nope, I'm not hearing anything. All right, so once again, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for playing. And we will be back next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.